Greetings world. We are Anonymous UK. The abolition of Britain is illegal under the British Constitution, and the criminal acts of the Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and her ministers have included the worst acts of treason in history. They secretly repealed the treason laws in 1998 by hiding it in Section 36.3 of the Crime and Disorder Act. They did this to save their own necks. The criminality of our ministers and parliament won't save us. The European Union's constitution will automatically abolish the British one, and they will have got away with the greatest crime in a thousand years. So today we bring you a list of traitors to Scotland and the United Kingdom. Since 1972, five European Union treaties have been signed abolishing our nation. As this is illegal under the British constitution, our nation needed to be undermined with the methods laid out here. The European Union is succeeding exclusively through subversion by British traders from within the UK. The European Union has the laws of a police state, and a constitution that hands absolute power to dictators who have not been elected. It specifically hands all military power, and that includes the nuclear weapons of Britain and France, to these dictators. It is the Soviet system, and creates a sham European Union Parliament with no power. It will abolish the nations of Great Britain and England. It's very important to understand the legal basis for treason. Firstly it has always been the most serious crime on the statute books, worse than murder. Treason has long been the only crime punished by hanging by the neck until dead. Murderers only get life. The definition of treason is a crime that undermines one's government or the offense of acting to overthrow one's government. Philby, McLean, Blunt, and Burgess committed treason by selling secrets to the Russians and would have got perhaps 15 years, if they had returned to the UK. The list of traitors according to the severity of their crime are. Traitor number 1. Her Majesty the Queen. She has committed five acts of treason in signing European Union treaties that abolish our nation. She is the only monarch to have broken her coronation oath. She has failed, as the ultimate check and balance, and failed to insist on a national ballot for the abolition of our nation. Traitor number 2. Edward Heath. Heath committed an act of treason by passing the 1972 European Union Communities Act, which is the enabling act to abolish our nation. He then lied in his white paper and in his speeches that this act would not abolish our sovereignty. He started the entire illegal EU process. The fact he was a lifelong member of the Deutsche Versicherungsdienst Intelligence Department was not discovered until after his death. What Edward Heath did was the ultimate act of treason, not just undermining our nation, but abolishing it. If a court case had been brought, he would have received the ultimate penalty. Traitor number 3. Tony Blair. Blair committed three acts of treason, with three European Union treaties. He is also an enthusiastic implementer of EU laws disguised as British laws, the latest being identity cards. He's an enforcer of crippling EU regulations. Blair is the chief manufacturer of the European Union Police State in Britain. He is also a Scottish Rite 33rd degree mason of Stud Home Lodge 1591. Traitor number 4. John Major. John Major committed treason with the Maastricht Treaty. He also sold our main military and nuclear port, Devonport Dockyard, to Dick Cheney's Halliburton Corporation for peanuts. His bride was to be European Managing Director of the Bush family's Carlisle Weapons Group, and $1 million per annum for life, so he is definitely bought and paid for. Traitor number 5. Margaret Thatcher. Thatcher committed treason with the Single European Act. She is the only Prime Minister who now regrets signing it. She is still guilty. A murderer who apologies is only has a mitigating circumstance. She will remain a traitor until her death. Like many top people on our side, she has developed heart problems and is too ill to help. The previous four people have all committed treason, and prosecutions were pending. Tony Blair's risk was the full force of the law for signing the Amsterdam Treaty amongst others. But in a stunning abuse of power, Tony Blair secretly repealed the treason laws, hidden in the Crime and Disorder Act, and the Queen signed it in 1998, saving both their necks. There can be no worse criminal abuse of the law than this. To get off your own execution as a prime minister by repealing the law you are charged under. The newspapers and media missed it entirely. Traitors number 6, 7, 8, and 9. John Prescott, John Reed, Peter Mandelson, Alan Johnson. All communists whose allegiance 
in the 1960s was to the Soviet Union, they switched their loyalty to the European Union in the 1970s, they've implemented the European Union's Frankfurt School subversion, and the 111,000 European Union regulations that are criminalizing us all. They also took control of the Labour Party away from patriotic traditionalists. Traitors number 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Ken Clark, Douglas Hurd, Michael Heseltine, Jeffrey Howe, Chris Patton, Francis Maud, and David Cameron. Pro-Europeans who have seized control of the conservative leadership, imposing their own agenda, and ignoring the wishes of conservative voters. They sabotaged representative democracy. A vote for the concerts has been a vote for the European Union dictatorship for 34 years. These are the traitors responsible. The leaders of our three political parties get their orders from the European Union, not the British electorate, who they neither serve nor care for. They've created a one-party state, the three parties have almost identical policies, and all agree on the abolition of Britain by the European Union. Traitor number 17. Julia Middleton, Managing Director of the Common Purpose Government Agency. Trained 19,500 local government, Quango and National Health Service leaders for what they chillingly called the post-democratic era. Closed to destroying the NHS and local democracy by transferring power from councillors to the council executives in preparation for the abolition of councillors with the European Union regionalization plan. Common Purpose is the number one subversive body outside Parliament. Its graduates include Janet Paraskeva, head of the Law Society and Cressida Dick, the senior police officer who, with the backing of European Union corpus juris, single-handedly threw away our right to life and common law with her shoot-to-kill policy, which is still in force today and, although she remains an unknown she is getting a breathtaking promotion, presumably to be appointed chief of police in this European Union police state. Traitor number 18. The Office of the Deputy Prime Minister or ODPM. In charge of the handover of power to the European Union, this office controls common purpose. It has put a monitoring officer into every council in the land. They suspend councillors who speak out for the truth. Traitor number 19. The Law Society itself, which we would prefer to call the Fraudulent Lawyers Protection Society on a local level, and the Constitutional Law Breaking Society on the national level. Top lawyers have refused to uphold the British Constitution or enforce our laws, where the European Union is concerned. The Law Society is a home for traitors. The very fact they had Janet Piraskia, a common purpose leader at their helm, shows how corrupt they must be. Traitor number 20. Baroness Warnock. Warnock was the ruthless implementer of the German Frankfurt School subversion on behalf of the European Union. Over the last 40 years our churches and families have been undermined, with single parenting being encouraged, teachers have had their authority removed, sex and homosexual education is forced on many under 13. Decades of political correctness have dumbed down our ability to speak out on these matters and the results of this fill our newspapers every day. Traitor number 21. Our slovenly lapdog press and media. It is stunning that the press has missed all this, the biggest story in a thousand years. Truly the quality of our journalists is now abysmal. No wonder the art of investigative journalism is dead. In the BBC's case it's simple sabotage, with hundreds of common purpose people in positions of power. In total there are about 25,000 dedicated subversives at all levels of society in Britain, helped by 100,000 useful idiots. Only 25,000 traitors versus 60 million. To oppose them are 60 million British people. So why are they winning? because the subversion these traitors have, so carefully implemented over the last 50 years, is working. The young have no interest in politics. Churches are empty. People have stopped speaking out. The public now just accepts every control, regulation, indignity, injustice and rule without complaint. To defeat the EU and the new world order that follows we must expose these traitors in their constituencies, at their places of work, and in the press. We must wake up as many British citizens, as possible to what is happening. We must refuse to comply at every opportunity. We must resist. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget, because none of us is as powerful as all of us. Expect us.